I think one of the most important features in Unity is being able to extend the editor. It's something that people often forget about, especially beginners. But being able to create your own tools to make game development easier, it can just save you so much time. So this video will be an introduction to creating editor scripts in Unity. We'll create our own editor window and talk about how you can use it. Also, huge thanks to Commander Firestone38 for his support over on Patreon. If you want to support the videos yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash brackies. So let's get started. To create an editor window, we need to start in the same way when adding scripts to our game. So let's go to the project panel and hit create and let's select C sharp script. Let's call this script example window. Let's hit enter and let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Now first we want to delete the two using tags at the top here. We won't be needing those and we can also go ahead and delete our two methods. Now normally when we code in Unity, everything that we need to use is inside of the Unity engine namespace. But when programming for the editor, we have a separate namespace. Let's write using Unity editor. And of course we don't want to put this script on a game object. Instead we want Unity to recognize it as an editor script. To do that, instead of writing mono behavior, we write editor window. So now we should have all the functionality needed available to us. What we then do is create a function. We'll write void. And this function is called onGUI. We don't need any arguments here and let's just open and close our curly brackets. So those of you who've been using Unity before the new GUI system in 4.3, you might recognize this function. That's because the onGUI method was used to draw UI in the game as well. But now we pretty much only use it in the editor. This is where we'll put all of our window code. So if we want to add buttons to our window, editable fields, labels, and even some functionality, we'll put it in here. So this is our window code. But first, of course, we need to display the window. To do that, we create a separate function. Now this needs to be a public static void, and let's call it show window. Again, it won't take in any arguments. And in here we want one of two things to happen. If the window isn't already shown on the screen, we want to create one. And if it is, we just want to focus on it. But we don't actually need to check for this sort of stuff ourselves. If we write editor window dot get window, this method will actually open up a window for us and make sure not to create another one if one is already open. All we need to do is specify the type of the window and that's gonna be our class name. So in our case, the type of window is going to be example window. We can even go in here and give it a title. If you don't specify a title, it's just gonna use the class name, which is fine. But I just wanna go ahead and shorten this to example. Note how it kind of grays out the first part here. That's because since we are deriving from editor window, this function is available to us without needing to call the specific class. And so we can actually just get rid of that. So as you can see, opening up a window is really easy. But we're not currently calling this show window method anywhere. So right now it's never gonna get opened. We could call this from another script, or we could make a menu item that would call this method and therefore show the window. To do that, we use a simple attribute. Attributes are used by using square brackets. We then write menu item. Let's open and close the parentheses. And here we simply write the item name. We want ours to be under the window tab and we want it to be called example. So now when we save this, head into Unity, wait for it to load, then go under window, we can now see our example. When we press this, a new window called example opens up. And we can go ahead and dock this anywhere in our editor. But currently the window is totally blank. Let's go ahead and add some stuff to it. Remember, this is done inside of the onGUI method. First of all, we can add a label by going GUI layout. GUI layout is a class that has functions for all sorts of stuff like drawing buttons, labels, spaces, etc. And the cool thing is that it will automatically lay out everything for us. So if we now create a label, we want the label to say something like this is a label and we can even give it a style. So we can go in here and specify a editor style dot. And let's just choose bold label. Now, when we save this, go into Unity and wait for it to reload. We can see that it says this is a label in a bold fund. Of course, this is very static. We can also add a text field here. To do that, we first want to create a variable that is going to store our text. Let's create a string. I'm just going to call it my string and set it equal to hello world. Then in our on GUI method, we write editor GUI layout dot text field. We then give the text field a label so that the user knows what to input here. In our case, we could put in something like name and we then feed it the variable that we want the text field to display. In our case, that's going to be my string. And then finally, of course, we'll set my string equal to the result of this text field so that we're both displaying the string and updating it. Now you might notice that in one place here I'm using GUI layout and in another one I'm using editor GUI layout 
Well, the distinction between the two is actually really vague. Some functions are only in one class and only in the other, and sometimes the same function will be in both, but they will look different. As a rule of thumb though, we use editor GUI layout whenever we want to edit fields and properties, and we use GUI layout whenever we want to create labels, spaces between properties, and buttons. But you really just have to get a feel of the two. If you see the same function in both, start by trying out the editor GUI layout. After all, it's made for this particular purpose. So now when we save this, head into Unity, we can see that we have a field here called name that is currently set to hello world. I'm gonna set this to Dwayne Johnson. Just because, you know, he's cool. So now we can add labels and fields. Let's add a button. To do that, we write if GUI layout dot button, and then we write the text for that button. I'm just gonna write press me. We then open and close some curly brackets, and everything in here will be called if our button is pressed. So let's just throw a debug.log statement here saying button was pressed. Let's save that, go into Unity. We can now see a button does appear called press me, and when we press it, button was pressed. Awesome, but this is just showing off the technology. Let's try and apply this to a simple topic. Here I have three primitives. I have a cube, a sphere, and a capsule. And each one of these objects also have a material, which is currently just a simple standard shader. But they're all white. Say I had a ton of these objects, and I wanted to be able to simply select them, and then color all of the selected objects to another color. Well, we could go and edit a million materials and try and find all of the matching ones, or we could make an editor extension. So in our example window, let's go ahead and rename our example to colorizer. Let's do the same thing for our menu item, colorizer. Let's delete our string and the text field for our string as well. We can then change the label to color the selected objects, and then exclamation mark. We can then change the button to colorize. Instead of throwing out a debug.log, well, we want to go through and colorize stuff. So let's just delete that for now. Of course, we want to be able to specify a color. So let's go to the top here and create a color. And let's just call it color. Notice how this is the exact same process as when we were creating a editable string. In our onGUI method, after our label, we can now go and call editor GUI layout dot color field. Again, we want to give this a name. We'll call it color. And we want to give it a color to show, which is going to be our color variable. And of course, we also want to set our color variable equal to the result of this color field. Let's just save to see if these changes are applied. You can see how the title of our window didn't change immediately. So let's just collapse that, go window, and now we have the colorizer and you can see that it's changed here as well. And we have this color field here that we can edit in any way that we want. But of course, if we select a few objects here and hit colorize, nothing currently happens. So when we press the button, we want to loop through all of the currently selected objects. To do that, we use selection. Under the selection namespace, we have stuff like the active game object, whether or not the selection changed, and most importantly, we have a variable called game objects. This is simply an array of game objects with all of the currently selected objects. As it says here, this also includes prefabs, non-modifiable objects, and so this includes pretty much everything. For now, we won't worry too much about that. So now that we have a way to get all of the currently selected game objects, we can loop through it. So let's create a for each loop and for each game object, and we'll call the game object we're currently looking at obj in our selection.gameObjects array. Well, then we want to go ahead and set obj dot, and to access the color here, we first need to get the renderer component. So we go get component of type renderer. And if we just go ahead and access the material here directly, we might get a case where we have objects selected that don't have a renderer. And so that would display an error. Let's instead store this in a temporary variable. The variable is going to be of type renderer. And let's just call it renderer with a non capital R. Then we can check if renderer is not equal to null. So if we actually found a renderer on the object, well, then we can set renderer.sharedMaterial.color equal to our color variable. And that should actually be it. So now for each object in our selected game objects, we get the renderer, and if it's not null, well then we go ahead and change the color. And of course, all of this happens when we hit the colorize button. To make this just a tiny bit cleaner, let's go ahead and cut our code and wrap this in a separate function called colorize. And let's create that right here. Void, colorize, no arguments, and then simply paste all of that code in there. 
Editor scripts can get really long and weird, so it's a good idea to separate it out in multiple functions. Let's now save this, go into Unity, try selecting say the cube and the sphere here and hitting colorize. And there we go! We can change to any color here and do any kind of selection and really easily we can colorize our game objects. That's pretty much it for this video. I have another video coming on the topic of extending the editor. This one is going to be about custom inspectors, which are just super useful. So make sure to subscribe so you get notified when that comes out. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in June. And a special thanks to Hans Hoftun, Commander Firestone 38, Will Goad, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Vorley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mommy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, and Peter Locke. If your name is not on the list, I will make sure to include it in videos later this month and the next month as well. Thanks a lot guys!